Well, last week was a pretty big week for the Lunar Sail project. We got in two very important deliveries. First, our CubeSat arrived. What we have is a one unit CubeSat. It has a solid wall body. And I'm not going to take it out of the protective cover, obviously, since uh, it's very sensitive to static charge and this is not a protected environment. But this is a one unit cube set. Now, this will hold the, the, the main computer and, and other internal systems. And for the solar sail, that's going to extend another two units above this, and that's going to be a custom, uh, a custom designed and built structure that we're going to use. This particular cube set was purchased uh, from Pumpkin. It's a, like I said, it's a one unit uh, cube set, uh, uh, a one unit cube set kit. And we had very good service and a very good delivery time. So thanks to our uh, vendor over there on the West Coast, that would be Pumpkin again. Now we'll set that aside. Obviously that's not a cheap piece of equipment. And the CubeSat kit comes with all the, the various um, components that you need to build out your satellite. Uh, this is the uh, development board, the PC-104 development board, as you can see. Looks like a computer motherboard, actually, and uh, there are some similarities. The in-circuit debugger and various other components that we're going to be using as we develop and build out the spacecraft. We also have been stocking up on our payload hardware, including uh, Raspberry Pi and Arduino kits. And as you see, there's the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. A little out of focus. And these are obviously not space rated or, or rad hardened. So what we'll be doing uh, most likely is taking the designs for these boards and, and uh, building or, or obtaining uh, more radiation tolerant uh, hardware. We don't need, you know, aerospace specification rad hardening, uh, but we do need something uh, a bit more tolerant than what you can just buy off the shelf, just for lifetime uh, concerns. We don't want the payloads to to uh, die from radiation exposure before we even get to the moon, obviously. Now, as I mentioned, the CubeSat is going to be in a three-unit package at launch. The first lower unit is the CubeSat kit which contains the, the brains and the, and the heart of the spacecraft. And then the other two units are, are going to be uh, custom designed and built. Now to do that, we, we received our other shipment last week. And here it is. This is a 3D printer from PrinterBot. Again, good, good uh, service and good delivery time. And for th with this unit, obviously this is in a, a kit form and needs to be assembled. This is a, a, a 3D printer that uses plastic, uh, like most of them. With this, we will be able to build our prototypes, which we'll be able to do, you know, rapid prototyping and also do it relatively inexpensively. So we'll be able to build prototypes of, of uh, spacecraft systems and hardware, uh, such as the two-unit extension uh, for our CubeSat. And then once we have a, a design and a working prototype, we'll then uh, be able to go and get a, a, a cube set, you know, the two units uh, manufactured out of metal components for the actual flight article. So we have both the cube set hardware, the, 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 the base of our, of our spacecraft, as well as our 3D printer. And you can't see it uh, in this video, but we've also been uh, procuring desktop computers, both Linux and Windows-based, 
and are in the process of establishing what you might call a uh, virtual design studio. And what this is, what this is, is a, a bunch of desktop PCs without keyboards and monitors, but what these will be used for is for our team members to log in remotely and be able to do design, coding work, testing, uh, multimedia work, whatever they need to do on our shared uh, private network. Uh, this is very important when you consider that the team is going to be distributed you know, across the country and, and potentially around the world. So we'll have all that centralized. That minimizes not just computer hardware costs, but it also helps uh, manage software costs since we don't need to supply software to every person in every country for their own computers, we can have shared systems that everybody will access. So we've been building out on in those three areas and uh, as well as continuing our, our um, basic uh, early design work and building out the team. And we're looking for anybody who wants to participate. Uh, Again, this is going to be as open source as possible, and the whole project, not just the spacecraft design. So we welcome anybody with 3D uh, making skills, programming skills, Android skills, Arduino skills, Raspberry Pi, anything. Uh, web skills. Uh, we're also looking for uh, corporate partners and sponsors. So uh, that's ongoing process that is... Uh, a good deal of what I spend my time with when I am not fortunate enough to have hands-on hardware. Uh, but again, it was a big week last week. Uh, this is what the crowdfunding campaigns last fall paid for. So right here you see the, uh, the benefits of your contributions, which we greatly um, appreciate. So that's it for this update. And as we continue, we'll have more updates and, and more entertaining and informative updates as well, especially after, you know, we get the printer built and working and get some prototypes assembled. Uh, things are going to start to really get interesting here this spring. So thank you for watching. And uh, again, thank you for your support as well.